Hey there, this is Chris Fueling, founder and CEO of LendingWise. I'm going to give you a quick tour of how to originate a loan and hit a majority of our features all in one session here. So here we go. So we're going to start and show you how to submit a loan through our web form system. People call it a point of sale. It's, you know, what we call as a quick app. Just enough information to, you know, determine eligibility without overwhelming the borrower with too much information. And then we'll move into the full app and collect docs along the way. And uh, we'll show you the borrower portal, broker portal, the marketplace to help you, if you're a broker, connect with lending sources, capital providers. If you're a lender, we'll get you listed in there, uh, depending on the plan that you choose with us or add on. The built-in e-sign feature, so you can send out the term sheet, disclosures, and any other custom docs to be e-signed. Our pipeline tool with automated workflow steps, our personal favorite that everyone loves, the dot collection engine, right, which will be used uh, to autopilot, you know, and collect all the documents that are needed on a loan file. You're going to really love that feature when you see it. We have our own doc generation template tool powered by Google Docs and Sheets, so you can build out your own deal sizers, executive summary. Um, agreements, templates of any sort, and it auto generates on the fly. And the loan servicing engine, um, you know, mainly tool for lenders, right? If you're managing the budget and draws, tracking yield spread, shadow servicing, or actually doing the full servicing for payoffs and payment generate, uh, statement generation, um, and, and things like that. So let's go ahead and originate a loan. Keep in mind, you can create a loan in multiple ways. So the, the one we're going to demo today is like submitting as if we're a borrower or perhaps a broker through the website. We're going to start with the quick app, end up with the full app, and it flows right into the system here in the different stages and, and workflow steps that are all customizable in the system. Um, users can log in, right? The back office user, the branch, the broker, loan officer, or borrower. These are all users in the system that can log into the portal and create a quick app and full app as well. And then third party systems as well can trigger the creation of a loan using webhooks or our API integrations with various providers. Okay. Um, that user architecture that I'm talking about here, just to highlight that, you know, Every system comes with a back office. These are your main power users that manage the loan files in your pipeline here in the back end. And these branches down below are like sales channels. You'll get one main branch included. And, you know, you can have loan officers or AEs underneath that branch and brokers. You know, loan officer AEs can manage brokers and then brokers can have borrowers and uh, borrowers have many loans, right? And so brokers can also work directly with the branch. But this architecture meets everybody's needs for the most part. The larger companies we work with will set up multiple branches to represent correspondence. Maybe AEs have their own branches, different divisions or satellite offices, okay, uh, net branches, if you will. And so each branch can represent its own sub account to the main account. These can be white labeled under their own brand and set up their own loan products that are kind of managed by the, you know, admin manager at the top. So super, super scalable, hard to outgrow this architecture. Hopefully you can appreciate that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and originate uh, a loan. So this is a website template. You know, we offer many different templates on our, on our website. Uh, if you don't have a, a good looking website, definitely, definitely check out our template gallery. You can, you know, get a nice polished, professionally designed website that converts really well and has our web forms built in. So here we're going to do a, a simple fix and flip loan today. And let's go ahead and let this load. You have the first question, are you a broker working with one? If I hit yes, I can register as a broker or select from a drop down and, and that's great. You know, and I can do the same thing if I'm a loan officer, I can have my loan officer drop down and uh, brokers will be able to register with you in your company. So it's a great way to get a broker registration and a deal at the same time. In this case, well, yeah, let's go ahead and select, you know, one of the brokers. And then here, um, these are all your products. You can choose as many products uh, as you want from our pre-built um, product set, or you can build your own custom product and set the fields, required docs, etc. So this is a built-in loan product called Fix and Flip. We're gonna do, 
Frank Flipper here, and we'll just put a uh, Frank at Flipper.com, and uh, I'm going to, you know, uh, well, this is actually selling, telling us we have this borrower. He's a returning borrower. So if I hit yes, I'll, I'll have to verify myself and all my information will populate. That's pretty cool, right? So that's all the information you see that we're going to be filling out today in the full app and quick app. It's all saved on the borrower profile. So it reloads for him every time he comes back. Super helpful feature. Um, so we can do borrower in, as an individual or an entity. And we have all the different entity types. Perhaps it's a trust and we have you know, different trust types or retirement entity and we have all the different IRA entities. We'll do something similar in common. You know, Flipper R Us. Call this an LLC. You know, Florida LLC. You know, we want to ask about their, you know, years of experience, number of deals in the last 36 months. Keep in mind the Quick App is customizable. Everyone has their own preferences as what fields they want to ask during the quick app. So this is what comes out of the box, what you're seeing today. And uh, I'm just going to do a 500K deal. Maybe it's worth 525. They're getting it under value. It's going to be worth 850. They're going to put 20% down, 75K. And everything auto calculates for LTV, ARV, and LTC. If, if I was trying to do a 5% down payment, you know, it's going to trigger some of the guidelines and you control these guidelines to know when it should be triggered and alerting the user. We'll, we'll do something here. Let's keep it. We'll go down the happy path. And so here we'll just put a uh, address. We have an auto generation, uh, auto suggest feature coming out in the next couple of days. So that'll be ready to roll soon. And, uh, Again, we're just trying to move quick, you know, in, in, in a live form, a lot of these fields will be validated, meaning you can't skip through them. You'd have to fill them out. And uh, here you just put a quick little um, explanation about what you're looking for, what you need, just to, you know, personalize your request. And that's it. That's a quick app embedded right on your form, on your website. And it works for all the different loan products. So it's a universal web form that works for all your loan products dynamically changing and asking the right questions and collecting the right documents based on the product type and details of that loan. So let's go ahead and check out this needs list. So we'll do a construction budget here. We'll, um, all right, so we're going to upload our construction budget here. Maybe we'll upload a driver's license just to get a couple things going in there and uh, these are optional you can choose to make them mandatory or you can even skip this step altogether and just do the quick app these are preferences that you would set up in the back end of the platform so that's it we submitted a quick app uploaded a couple documents and here we go into the system and there's the Frank Flipper deal so if I click on that I will see a brand new submission. It looks like it was a, a broker involved. And there it is. Uh, this broker is approved with us. And um, I can click on soft credit pool and I'll get a credit score on this borrower. And uh, this is everything that was filled out on the quick app just in front uh, on the web form that we saw. So as a broker, I would maybe check out the marketplace. And I would say, all right, let's see who can do this type of fix and flip deal with this LTV, ARV in this state. And then we have a list of, you know, suggested lenders, right? And so you can add your own lenders to the mix here. If you have your own capital providers, hard money lenders, private money lenders, you can add them to this list. They'd be unique to your environment only. And um, our, our system lets you kind of build out a profile with the max LTV, LTC, ARV, what their niches are, you know, their details, requirements for processing, underwriting, upload any commonly used documents. And more importantly, you can click on the submit financing request and it goes to the, your main contact there and sends out this email that's pre-formatted with a link to the deal room. If you don't like our built-in template, you can change it to your own um, 
email template that is structured the way you want with all the dynamic fields. But that deal room, just to show you what it looks like, this is what the lender would get. A preview of the deal in read-only mode, of course, and they can submit an offer here and let you know what the rate is, the points, the LTV, and they can upload their term sheet. So that's a great way to compare offers, right, that have been submitted. So assuming, you know, you sent it out to, a, you know, a few a few le a lenders, you would go here and say, all right, ArchWest gave me a quote, 10 and a half and one and a half points, 80% LTV, you know, you know, ABC lender, you know, gave me this deal offer, right? So you can compare all the different offers and store them and, you know, select the ones that you want to quote with the borrower. In the future, we'll have a quote matrix that you can select to the client. You can see the, which are the preferred, you know, quotes that you recommend and they can choose whichever one they want. But when you're ready to go into submitting the um, term sheet, you know, all you got to do is just set the rate, right? So I'm going to do 11 and a half and um, that's it. It auto calculates the payment. I can set this to be a Dutch versus non-Dutch, right? So now it's 38, 33. And uh, by the way, all the fields that you see in here, you can turn some of these off. You know, if you don't need doc type, for example, or type of purchase, where it came from, you know, occupancy, lean position, right? Some of these things are just extra fluff that you don't need. You can turn that off in the back end and, and, and or make it dynamic to certain loan products. So maybe a, a non-QM DSCR loan, you'll want doc type in there and um, you can make that feel dynamic. So system can be really, really smart. All right. So at this point, we got our points. You know, notice how this is auto auto-populated. You can save your preferences to like what your points and fees are per product in your system. So that's super handy and helpful to keep things moving fast, efficiently. You can obviously, obviously override that or add additional fees. So for, I might add a, you know, 850 underwriting fee on this file. And um, you can set the prepayment penalty if you want. You can also indicate if there is a interest reserve or payment payment reserve that needs to be verified in bank statements and stuff, ta cash to close. Regarding payment reserve, you can actually do what a lot of lenders do is your prepaid interest reserve. So you can set that to yes and factor that in and put, you know, 24,000, you know, six months, you know, payment reserve. And, um, you know, these are all just additional questions that all this stuff is designed to populate on your term sheet, which I'll show you right now. So here's your term sheet, auto generate from the system. A lot of companies use this. You've probably seen this floating around out there. So you'll be your logo. You can set whatever originator you want to put on there. Typically it's whoever's the system owner, but you can swap it out with whoever the actual lender is if you prefer. And uh, it's nice and clean, very detailed, right? And uh, you can put your own additional terms and requirements and disclosures, and then the borrower can sign this, right? So let's go ahead and send this out to the to the borrower. So I have a bunch of templates in here. This one is called the pre-approval template. It's going to go to the borrower, and it's pre it's pre-written, right? Beautifully designed and written, uh, linked to full app. And let's go ahead and add the uh, term sheet. You select the term sheet at the credit auth and send that out, right? Click send. And what it looks like on the borrower end is this right here. Borrower gets a nice welcome email, link to the full app, you know, click here to sign the term sheet. Let's go ahead and show you what that looks like. And this loads very mobile friendly. So on their phone, they can sign this or desktop. Obviously, they can review it. Click to sign, draw or type their signature. And that's it. And then the second important call to action is the full app because the quick app, we just got the basic information that we needed to determine eligibility. But if they're ready to move forward, let's get this deal in the processing, underwriting 
and build out their loan file. So the full app is meant to capture all that detailed information, their address, mailing address, if it's different, you know, uh, social date of birth, you know, if there's a co-borrower, we need their information. Um, you know, on the entity level, we want the EIN number. We want maybe the business address, the um, all the members of that entity. You know, who, you know, obviously if, you know, this guy owns 50%, this guy owns 25, this guy owns, this guy has 25. We even support uh, a member being an entity and then that entity having its own layer of partners and, 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 and members there. So it's a very thought out system. You know, we're, I, we're even asking about, are they authorized to even sign to make this loan, right? That's important. Um, borrower background, now we're getting into more like bankruptcy, disclosures, lien information, foreclosure history, right? Um, I want to highlight something. There's a lot of questions here you're seeing in the full app. You can obviously turn on and off all these fields and sections accordingly. You can make it conditional to the product type that we're dealing with, okay? Um, so here we're asking about list three examples of past deals. You know, this is just nice to know. You know, how many projects do you have in progress? How many investment properties do you have? Do you have any professional licenses? Your primary investment strategy? You're building a profile. And remember, we save all this for the borrower and every time they come back, it all preloads for them. So they don't, they don't need to do this every time they do a deal. And, uh, you know, what's the assets? You know, obviously that'll change over time, but it'll remember what they entered in last time and then they can update it accordingly. So you can get like a nice little net worth summary on your borrower if you want it. Here you have schedule of real estate. Some people like to have it all input into the system and it spits out a nice clean PDF report of it. Otherwise, some clients prefer to have an upload. And here you can see on mouse over, you know, please enter in your track record uh, of sold properties and on your schedule of owned real estate. You can also upload this data in the next step for required docs. So they don't have to do this all manually. They can actually upload it as well. Here's your terms, subject property details. Here you can have more than one property, so it can be cross collateralized. Additional questions, title, attorneys, escrow, insurance. These are all contacts associated to the loan. And I can actually draw my signature. Isn't that handy? A nice digital signature pad right embedded on the form you know, this would be your terms and conditions for pulling credit and, and any other important um, disclosures that you want to include there. And then I can submit and watch this. Step two of the full app was going to have some additional documents that are needed. We're, we're a little bit further down the funnel. So maybe now we're going to ask for proof of insurance. Right. Or if there's GC license insurance bond, if that's a, a requirement for this type of loan, construction loan, we might ask for that. You know, exit strategy letter. You know, so these are things that we didn't ask on the quick app, but now we're further down the stage. So let's go ahead and ask for it. If they have it, great. If they don't, well, the processor is going to be nudging them to get that stuff. OK. Um, again, so I can drag and drop and upload from my mobile phone and or. Um, desktop as well. Everything that you just saw on that web form converts to an application that's PDF for the borrower and for you. So look at this PDF. Everything that they just filled out magically converts to a PDF. So you'll always have a digital PDF loan app of all the different loan products you offer. And as, as you make changes throughout time in the system and adding fields, it'll always show up here on your loan app. So there's no custom work needed with developers and PDFs. It's that's always a big pain in the butt and takes a lot of time. Right. And at the bottom, you have the signature and the IP address of when it was signed. Right. So this serves as your digital loan app and it converted to PDF. So what happens from here? You know, we did the quick app, full app, you know, you know, let's go ahead and put our processing hat on and look at some of these docs. Right. So, for example, let's go to um, some of the docs in here, you know, in this sample file, you can see like I've already dispositioned quite a few. 
So some of them say resend not legible, resend wrong doc, needs legal review. You know, a lot of lot of negative stuff in here, but I just wanted I mean showing you that like you have different statuses for documents, right? And you can make comments in here. So if I were to say, you know, let's let's say the entity docs needs manager review so actually hey you sent me you know please you know resend the operating agreement signed by all partners right that's a common thing that might come up and i can notify the borrower co-borrower broker and even the members of the entity so that everybody knows what's missing and needed. That's what we, we, we make that a big deal. Always be able to communicate clearly in the system, right? So if I hit save, it'll notify everybody there. And, but more importantly, this is where the best feature comes in. How do we get all these documents on autopilot to be collected by, you know, the borrower, ready? Here's the magic trick. Let's type in the template loan status required docs. We're going to send this to the borrower, CC, maybe the co-borrower or the broker, right? And, and any other members of our team that we want to get this email and look at the body. All the items that are missing needed status notes, you know, everything that was put in the borrower notes or the underwriting conditions are visible by the borrower. And there's a link to upload everything right here. And where the autopilot comes in is I click yes to automate it. And we're going to send this out every day, maybe every other day, maybe once a week. We can choose custom dates, right? But let's go for the every day, every weekday, and only send it if we're in processing or underwriting. That is the trick right there. And that makes a lot of good business sense, right? Because if you move the file to clear to close or you kill it, there's no need to send them this email. But if it's actively being processed and underwritten, very likely new things are being added, notes are being made, conditions are being, you know, thrown in the mix, right? So every day the email goes out, it will always be the latest update of what's needed and missing, okay? So once I click send, that goes out and this is what the borrower gets right here nice friendly email every day to giving them information and that what that does for you is it's awesome customer service borrowers brokers know what's going on they're not bugging you your processor the ae the loan officer it's such a daisy chain extended feedback loop when they have to go through three different people to get an update that takes you know a couple days at best and then there's usually lost information along the way and so this really gives everyone instant access to real time, accurate uh, information that's from the, 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 the source of truth. And when they click this link, this takes you immediately to the borrower portal where they can see what's going on, what's the target closing date and upload some documents, right? And they can see all the notes that have been made they can download templates associated to some of the needs list, if that's relevant, right? And this would be your company name. And this URL would be your URL with our private label package. So that's why, you know, it makes it look like the whole entire system runs off your domain and it's your tech stack. It's your custom system. It makes you guys look extra professional, committed to the industry, and builds a lot of trust. All right, so at this point, we've got the quick app full app uploaded with documents you know processor dispositioned a lot of things and um we, we you know we saw how easy it was to disposition it i, I want to highlight the workflow steps because that's what really keeps everybody humming along in a very logical manner so these are all action items that your team needs to do whether it's your loan officer doing the application steps which makes sense right your processing underwriting team working in tandem to get all these items done, right? And uh, closing team does these items here. Post-closing does these items here. You know, when you're do dealing with draws, you can deal with this. So these are all workflows. Workflows have steps. These steps can be dynamic based off the product type, the property type, the property state, the borrower type. 
you know, you control that logic. So the system is really smart. Not only is it based on all those product type features, you know, loan parameters, but the investor and lender that you're dealing with, you can overlay their required workflow steps, their required docs. Okay. And let me show you what I mean by that. So if I go back to the docs tab, you see this internal loan program. So, you know, ABC family office is going to be my capital source and they have to do a background check that uses LexisNexis. They, they won't take this deal unless I do a LexisNexis background check. That's their requirement. And that's called an overlay because I know I'm giving it to them. I now know to process it in the way that they're going to want it. Again, making everything very smart and conditional to your investor or lender that you're working with on this loan. So again, require docs, workflow steps, and any of the fields throughout the application, right? You know, I'll go back here to the full app. So some of these questions and fields that we went through, we know we have almost 2000 fields throughout the system. You can make any of those fields or create custom fields um, and make them conditional to the investor you're working with or the product, et cetera, okay? So that concludes the origination tour, right? Um, well, actually, I'll, I'll highlight one more piece, which is the doc generation. Sorry, I keep going back and forth. But down here in the docs tab, you have a whole library of documents. Let me scroll down. You know, these are all folders, borrower docs, pre-approval term sheet, you know, the 1003. You know, if you go back up, you've got disclosure docs. You've got loan docs. So if I wanted to generate closing instructions or if I wanted to generate a promissory note, you know, like here would be closing instructions. Right here, everything populates with some detailed closing instructions. And then here's a promissory note with everything pre-populated, right? And you can build your own templates that populate these items, okay? Um, you know, moving into post-closing activity. So that maybe like budget and draws would be something relevant for fix and flip or construction loans. So you can see here, we've got 20,750 worth of draws, 54,000 is left in the balance, 27% complete. And these, how you, this is how you enter in each one, each one of the draws. The draws can have different statuses. You can fund a percentage of the draw request keep upload any documents, receipts, images, and keep tab of your notes on each draw. So very detailed draw management tool. And then you can send out an email to your servicer to issue that draw with which indicates your draw fee and the amount, etc. Um, you even have the rehab budget in detail with all the line items. Um, when you go into servicing, here you have all the servicing related information, details for default interest, extension options, important dates, lender, trustee. You know, if you're using a third party servicer, you can put that here. And then here you have all your investors. If you have fractional investors, you would keep track of them all here, what their yield is, what percent they put into the loan. And then when you get into the actual servicing ledger, that would be over here in this servicing 2.0 tab. So this kind of highlights all the key data points on the loan, the setup. Here you can order a payoff statement. Here you can track all your payments that have been made. You can preview the mortgage statement here, add a payment. You can pull from the prepaid interest reserve or do a manual payment. Here's your draws, pay downs. Here's all the investors that are on the loan and kind of handle the, the yield and you know distribution waterfall distribution of payments. This is your escrow accounts, any uh, miscellaneous charges, late fees, default interest, kind of summary of all the different balances. And then the journal kind of gives you a play by play, you know, date by date, what transactions occurred on, on the on the ledger. And uh, here we're expanding into FCI integration. So this would be used to board your loans and, and submit it to the through the API. 
and you can actually populate it on the PDF as well. And for, furthermore, when it comes to reporting, you have your servicing. You can kind of see all your loans in servicing here and the last payment that were made. You can keep track of all your investors and what yield they've been getting and, and, and total dispersed. Um, this would be your individual distributions to the investors. These would be your individual payments record by record. You can actually like bulk upload all the payment from your NACHA file and things like that. So that concludes origination, a little mini servicing tour. I hope that makes sense and you see value in our system. I'll just quickly highlight the dashboard. The dashboard gives you the aggregate total of all your loans in each of those stages. So you know this actually follows the life cycle of a loan from a lead, application, pre-approved, processing, underwriting, clear to close, close, servicing, active draws, sold loans, right? REOs, right? You can control the stages that you want. You can quickly see the loan amount in each stage. And then down below you have upcoming closing. So I can see Frank Flipper, you know, I can see what action items have been done on the workflow steps, what documents have been uploaded, when are we closing? I could see the note history all from the dashboard view, which is awesome and user friendly. And I can see who my top producers are, you know, who are my, you know, most active loans I've been touching and working on. You can see quickly see my tasks and reminders here, right? You can quickly see my state map, where are most of my deals at? And, uh, just little pie charts here to kind of show me what's what percent of my loans are in different stages. Also see my lead sources here, what percent of my deals come from trade shows or Google or Facebook, etc. One more thing I'll show you is your pipeline. Here's your pipeline highlighting all the different stages and all the loans inside of each stage. I obviously can filter my pipeline. I can search by loan type, show me all construction loans that are in this particular status tied to this particular state or property type right and cl maybe closing or maturing wh which property or loans i have that are maturing in the future so i can have a, an aging report so all of these filters and then the columns down below can be customized here right so i can choose what columns of data you know lean position project name arv like all kinds of details right so once I set my filters, my columns, I can save the view and then I can go back to that same view with the same search filters and columns and, and, and even do reports off of that. And I would select my closed loan report or my servicing export report or draw report or the Turok loan tape, right? And it has all the data points that I need, including any custom fields. And that way I can generate a deal sizer or loan tapes or whatever custom report I need, maybe for Humda reporting, right? So I have all those just, uh, specific fields for all the Humda stuff. So um, very powerful tool to organize all your data and, and custom pipelines and custom views and custom reports. Over here on the left, you'll see that you have, you know, your automation, features to build your rules engine, you know, if this, then that, you know, can trigger emails and tasks and webhooks. So if the loan status is in clear to close for more than 10 days, trigger an email to the manager, things like that. Platform settings, this gives you full control of customizing your required docs and your workflow and your stages, statuses, substatuses, your loan guidelines, you know, what tabs in the loan file do you want to display in what order? to, you know, and, and obviously your form fields you can control what form fields are needed throughout the entire system. So we like to give our users lots and lots of control to personalize their system. So it works the way they want. And down here you would see doc wizard and email wizard tools. That's how you create your own document templates and email templates used throughout the system. Lastly, we'll go over the help center. Help Center has all the different resources you need, your user manual, the knowledge base. These are live tours that get you right through the system and educate you and any new users that you bring in. Um, you can have live chat, which is down here. And um, 
you know, a lot of videos that you can watch, help tickets. You can schedule live Zoom meetings with us to get you assisted. And something else that's really powerful is the account setup down here. This really helps us during onboarding understand what you need the most help with. But we definitely go in a very logical order of setting everything up. So we see here, it's usually a 30 day process, three to four weeks. All these sessions are designed to build your foundation and educate you on how to configure the system, how to use it and, and make sure you're all trained up and confident to launch your organization on a strong, scalable foundation. And uh, this tool tells you what percent you've set everything up in the platform. So when it comes to setting up all your different user types, when it comes time to set up your loan programs, your internal loan programs, which we call investor overlays or lender overlays with the loan guidelines, you know, different stages and statuses and permissions, setting up all your workflow steps, triggering events with automation, right? Customizing required docs, customizing the fields for the web form. So it's very detailed, right? And so we want to make sure that you take advantage of all the features of our system. And, you know, this lets you indicate what percent you've completed in understanding everything and setting all the things up. One last uh, piece of the help center is also our live trainings every week. Tuesday at 2 p.m., we do user training for brokers and loan officers. And then Wednesdays at 2, we do more back-end system admin training for you know lenders primarily who are trying to really take advantage of all their back-end um, features and functionality. So we have two levels of uh, ongoing weekly group training. So definitely come in and join us and, and ask you know any questions you want and listen into other people's questions so you can continually evolve and learn the system. Okay, that concludes our demo today on the loan origination, servicing, and, and little tour of the system. I want to leave it to you to now ask any questions, what you think uh, about what you saw, what features we didn't cover that you wanted to see, and um, take it from there. Thank you for your time.